What's up, Midas Mighty, and welcome to the Midas Touch Podcast. Ben Mycellus joined by Brett and Jordy Mycellus. We have a great episode for you today. Comedian and all around great patriot, Hal Sparks. Let's go. Be joining the Midas Touch Podcast today. And if you recall in some of the past chats, Hal and Midas have been very close now for, um, you know, really since we began Midas Touch. Hal's been there yeah. from really day one and we were on Hal stream. And so he's always really been there for us promoting our content. But I loved in the recent chat room when Hal Sparks, his supporters are known as the Sparklers, were <laughs> interacting with the Midas Mighty. So Yo, shout out to the Sparklers who shout show up yeah. and show up big. What was funny was, and I, I, I'll have to bring this up to Hal or something, but they were on our Facebook stream and our YouTube stream and they're like, Sparklers in the house. Mm. And I was was like it's so good to have you guys here thank you so much for joining us could you please tell me what a sparkler is <laughs> <laughs> i really I, I really didn't know like I, I so appreciate that you're here but what's a sparkler and they go we're fans of hal sparks and i said oh oh my gosh we love hal excited to have him on the show and some would say sparkler. that the, the sparkler x midas mighty crossover is the most ambitious crossover <laughs> of 2021 some are, many people are saying it many people, many are, people saying. are saying it I couldn't agree more. And look, my my heart was just filled with uh, so much pride this weekend when I saw some of these comments come through. There was a comment by um, one of the Midas Touch supporters. Her name is Kelly Cross. And she said, thank you guys for everything you do. I discovered you guys a couple months ago and I was feeling so hopeless. I've been active in the Democratic Party for a long time, but was feeling so discouraged until I discovered you guys. You helped me get through a really rough time. And, you know, we joke about sparklers and we always say chills. how proud we are about, you know, the Midas Mighty and what that community means. But when I received comments like that and how people take the enthusiasm and take that enthusiasm and put it into action, it really just warms my heart. And then I don't know if you've seen this, Brett and Jordy, I, I probably have seen it, but if other people haven't, <laughs> Midas Aaron created this. From day one, Midas Aaron's been putting a collage together of some of the kind of very active Midas Mighty members who are out there, you know, registering voters. Um, and she began with, you know, really what? It was 10, 12 people. Maybe and now that. it's somewhere in the range of 3,100 people who are just incredibly active. And I'm sure if you're not, if you can't find yourself in this <laughs> photograph, reach out to Midas Aaron. She's always, oh, she's going to love wait, us wait. telling all wait, of our wait, listeners wait. to don't, reach out to you know what? Don't, don't do that because I see some of the comments that she gets. I don't see myself on there. And then she, because she's so sweet, she, you know, tells the person exactly where they are. But like, I just feel so so bad. there's over 3000 people on I'm there. Impressed. She made the this entire beautiful collage and now it's not her job to go and find you. You're there. Trust us. Trust Midas Aaron. She she's the absolute best. And then Ben, right before we move on from this one, have you guys seen Midas Jerry talking about what we're doing like putting the action in action? She's out there registering people to vote over in Texas. I love seeing that. And I love seeing those photographs that uh, that she posts and people often ask what can I do to get involved? How do I make a difference? And what we always say is start small. I mean, just registering certain voters in your community is a huge accomplishment in and of itself. You don't have to start a, the, one of the biggest pro-democracy movements. You're already part of it. And so what you can do is start by just registering voters, sharing videos, get the message out and make sure that Democrats show up. One of the things we'll talk about on the podcast today is, and we should just mention it right now, and we'll talk about it more in detail, is as we're recording this um, tomorrow, though, and as you're, if you're listening to this on Tuesday or if you're listening to it later in the week, it will already have happened and we'll see if our predictions are true. But we have the recall election on Tuesday, September 14th, 2021 
in California and the Midas Mighty have showed up for that, really getting out the word. We had a text message campaign where we messaged all uh, Midas Mighty members or anyone who's even showed interest in wanting to be active and has provided their phone numbers. We've reached out to in California and got huge, massive feedback there. And so if you're listening to this live as we're recording it, it's not too late. Make sure you get anyone who hasn't voted to show up at the polls and to vote no on the recall. And for those watching this on or listening to this after on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or some later date, you know, hopefully we think what's going to happen based on the incredible groundswell of support for democracy, that the no vote is going to prevail. But we will keep you updated on all developments. I'll tell there. you, I'm not trusting polls for a second. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to trust polls for a second. I like trends. I like looking at trends. I like seeing the way the wind is blowing and that's all looking good. But I still don't give a shit. You need to step up and it's easy. All you got to do is circle no on your ballot put it in your envelope and bring it over to either your mailbox or even better, if you don't trust the mail, put it right in one of those drop boxes, which are all over California. I love how easy California makes it to vote. And so take advantage of that or vote in person on September 14th. Uh, go go and, and show up and, and just make your voice count because this is going to be a turnout election above all and we need to show up. What I didn't even realize till recently with this election was at first they didn't have enough signatures to do the recall and they took advantage of being able to use COVID to have an extra four months to collect signatures so that they could push through this recall. So I think it's really ironic how they used the COVID uh, measures that were out there to protect people that they don't want to exist in order to push forward this Republican takeover, costing upwards of, at the lowest of estimates, $215 million, which I think this should be like, Ben, one of those slap lawsuits. Like, you should have to pay the money back if your attempt doesn't work. There should be some stakes here. You shouldn't just be able to call a recall at any time. You could just waste $215 million from the state. And now we're seeing all these people, elder and other Republicans around the country, making disputing elections their platform. Elder is already saying, oh, there's gonna be voter fraud in California because he has a strong feeling that he's probably going to be destroyed. So he wants to waste even more money in California, even more resources by making these fake claims of voter fraud. And it's enough, enough, accept the results of an election. Stop whining. Let's get back to democracy again. Exactly, Brett. And gone are the days when people resign gracefully. Gone are the days that people gone. acknowledge that they've lost gracefully. We'll never see that again. And it's sad and it's scary because it just undermines the fundamental thing that this nation was built on. And I'll say this, Jordy, you know, yes, but Democrats bow out gracefully. <laughs> you know, Democrats act like adults. Gone are the days where the GQP fascist party mm -hmm. accepts what a democracy is. Good correction. That's the only asterisk I would add there. And I would also add, gone are the days where the GQP, where the Republican Party, I guess by the very nature of the fact that they are now the GQP, respects decency, respects human compassion, and respects days of national mourning. You know, this weekend was September 11th. It was the 20 year anniversary of a date that will live in infamy. More than 3,000 lives perished. And our hearts and our prayers go to each and every one of those lives lost, to their families, to their communities, to an entire nation that mourned that horrible terrorist attack that forever changed our nation a date that we will never forget. And of course you have past presidents, Clinton, Obama, you have George W. Bush, who was at the Flight 93 Memorial with Kamala Harris, um, but the past presidents all coming together and reflecting with moments of silence, paying respects to those who lost their lives, standing in stark contrast, in stark contradiction to whatever the heck that was. One of the most 
cruel and unusual slaps in the face to 9-11, one of the most disrespectful showing that I could ever have possibly fathomed by Trump, by Trumpism, by the GQP. You know, Trump began his day, you know, with a PR stunt that was all about him in front of a small group of, I think it was a small group of police officers where Trump was talking about whether he was going to run again for office, you know, cracking jokes and making it all about him, 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 him for a small period of time. And then he went on to host a awful, pitiful boxing match. The very fact that he would host this boxing match on a boxing match on Triller, he was bragging that he was paid millions of dollars to host this boxing match between Evander Holyfield, who is 58 years old, who can't even string together sentences yet al- and could barely even like walk, yet alone throw punches against someone named Vitor Belfort, who's actually in good shape, who's a former UFC fighter. It's a fight that should never have been sanctioned, like just a a sick fight. That's what I was surprised about. How did that get sanctioned? Bill, he was 44. Belfort was 44. Money money talks, unfortunately, and it raised, even as an exhibition, that shouldn't have been sanctioned no matter what it was because Evander Holyfield was knocked out in the first minute of the fight. And again, I I was telling you before, Brett and Jordy, I said, this isn't going to be a fight. Like Evander Holyfield, go back to interviews. (laughs) I, I said, I said, he can't even speak a sentence. Like, go and look at his videos. He He can't talk. You know what? Just for the sake of it, just so people know, just play this clip, Brett, of Evander Holyfield's interview um, before the fight. Coming into this fight brings up concerns. People in the combat sports community they like to talk. You're, you're 58 years old. They, they feel like, oh, man, he can't be doing this right now. And the fact that it matters, you know, I would have a problem if I was going to do the MMA with him because that ain't what I do. But I know that I, I do boxing and I took care of myself real well. I'm telling you, know, I'm telling, the fact is that I'm like, you know, you know, with 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 a MMA guy and who, who, yeah, he, he do a couple of things right. So setting aside that fact, the fact that Donald Trump spent his September 11th getting paid money to host a boxing fight on Triller is pretty horrific. But that's not the worst of it, Brett. But wait, but wait, before we move on to the worst of it, because yes it somehow gets worse and it somehow (laughs) gets lower because there is no floor with these people. It just gets lower and lower and lower. But Don Jr. promoted the fight by hyping up that his father was going to reveal secrets about Area 51 and aliens. This is what he was doing on 9-11. He made some sort of post that said something to the effect of, want to hear the truth about Area 51? I hear my dad's going to say it all tonight. Courtesy of Triller, get the pay-per-view boxing match, pay your money here, and with a link to, to pay for the fight. It's just one big, bizarre, sicko grift. But you're right, Ben, that was not the worst of it. The worst of it came from this bizarro video, pre-recorded video, that aired that night at an event that has been that was advertised for weeks before at the Unification Church also known as the Mooney's cult. I want to thank the Universal Peace Federation and in particular, Dr. Hawk Jahan Moon, a tremendous person for her incredible work on behalf of peace all over the world. Her story of escaping from North Korea at five years old at the outset of the Korean War is an amazing example of the power of faith in Almighty God. I also want to thank her late husband, Reverend Moon, for founding the Washington Times, an organization for which I have tremendous respect and admiration. Early on in Midas Touch, we wanted to dive into cult behavior. Um, And one of the ways we did that was we spoke with and then interviewed Diane Benskitter, who was a member of the Moonies in the 1970s. Diane Benskitter and others have since talked about their experiences being 
in the Moonies cult, how they basically gave up everything for this cult, including their families. Uh, ben Scudder analogized being in the Moonies to being a MAGA member, which is kind of ties this full circle. Yeah. Um, it's not surprising that actually a lot of Moonies have deep ties with the January 6th insurrectionists and were in fact there as insurrectionists on January 6th. So in many ways, this almost feels like one, Trump was probably paid a lot of money to do this, um, but also kind of a thank you back to the Moonies for supporting the January 6th insurrection, if yeah. you view it in that context. And if you don't know the Moonies, I'll give you just a, a surface level dive into who the Moonies are. And I recommend you, you know, do some research on them just to see the true depths of depravity of, of this group. But the Moonies, as we said, their official name is the Unification Church. They were founded in 1954. And this is kind of their core belief. It's that Jesus failed in his mission. So their founder, whose name is Sung Myun Moon, had to take over Jesus's place. That's kind of the crux of the entire organization. They have ceremonies worshiping AR-15 rifles. If you see these videos, you will see just a pool of people with AR-15 strapped around them and they are worshiping these AR-15 rifles. They are extremely political. They are known to be a dangerous, authoritarian, fascist cult. The church is currently led by Hyung Jin Sean Moon, who his followers call King, and Moon wears a crown of bullets around his head Stop. and always carries around an AR-15. And Ben, as you said, they were highly involved in January 6th at the Capitol. And one of their followers was uh, reported to have said, I thought I shouldn't worry, but to be there to support the king. If the scaffolding collapsed from so many people, and he's talking about raiding the Capitol, it would be tragic, but that would be a good way to die as an offering. Now, Steve Hassan, who was a former member of the Moonies, this guy escaped the cult, and he's now written numerous books on cults, PhD. Steve Hassan, PhD. And he says the Moonies, along with conspiracy monger Alex Jones, to show you what kind of company they're in, are attempting to, quote, program the people that we're going to have a civil war in the streets, and we need our guns to kill all the commies. And he says he is very, very concerned about this, being a former cult member of of the Moonies. And another weird little factoid that I didn't even realize until yesterday, to be honest, was that the Moonies own the website, the Washington Times. <laughs> I had no idea that. And so they're spreading this propaganda, which is picked up all over the place in these MAGA right wing circles. That's unbelievable, too, that and I think that needs to be, you know, said again, Brett, you know, the Washington Times, a, 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 some paper that's masquerading as a legitimate political paper spreading With that name. Paper. They are trying to act like they are like the Washington Post or an answer to the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to call them these MAGA fascist lunatics. That's how they view this paper. That's how they spread it around social media. These articles get spread around Facebook at such a fast rate, and it's literally designed and founded by a fascist cult. And you saw uh, some of the statistics that were about 70 to 80 percent of the disinfo in the world was resonating from the White House. And you see how they do it. You know, he goes on, speaks to the Moonies. The Moonies then reflect the disinfo from the Washington Times. They then lend their supporters to be insurrectionists to overthrow our government. You then have GQP Congress members repeating and using their platforms to repeat that the election was stolen. And you can see this circle of what's going on here. Um, one of the things that I, I want to do at Midas Touch is we had Ben Skidder on. Um, uh, Dr. Hassan would be a great guest as well. Mm -hmm. I'd love to do something where we bring in all the cult experts and kind of share their oh, knowledge wow. with um, I love that idea that would be yeah, great I, I, so stay tuned for that idea and by the way I, sorry I just I don't want to give other people a pass too because I just want to say how deep the roots are in the Republican Party between Republicans and the Moonies because Trump may be the most recent person to have headlined an event for the Moonies but Mike Pence and Mike Pompeo have both also headlined events for the Moonies this is something that's deep in the Republican Party. They court these people. They are going after, they want these cultists to be in their cult also. This is like a cult alliance.
cult alliance and really a quid pro quo for spreading a disinfo. Quid pro quid quo. quo, quo. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you both you both thought that. Also on the subject of 9/11, you know, two other just points of, you know, also utter, you know, bizarrety and and disrespect. I'm not sure if you saw Marjorie Taylor Greene's way of reflecting Dude. on 9/11 was she came out with a CrossFit workout plan called the Kabul 13 which was 13 rounds for time with a partner, 21 push-ups. And she says, as a longtime CrossFitter, it's a tradition to do hero workout of the days as a way to suffer and reflect on heroes. Was the 13 because 13 service members died? I have to imagine so. Yeah, I have to. I, I, don't, I have to imagine that's the reason. Yeah, it was because of the 13 people who died in Afghanistan. That's so disgusting. And that's what she wants to, you know, label. Um, that's what she wants to label. Marjorie Taylor Greene is literally like a 9-11 conspiracy theorist and denier. She doesn't believe that a plane hit the Pentagon. She yeah, doesn't play the believe- clip. Just, just, just to reflect, play the clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about 9-11 um, from a, a few years back. We had witnessed 9-11, uh, the terrorist attack um, in New York and the plane that uh, crashed in Pennsylvania and the so-called plane that crashed into the Pentagon. It's odd. There's never any evidence shown for a plane in the Pentagon. But anyways, I won't, I'm not going to dive into the 9-11 conspiracy. Could you believe that that individual has the title, the honorable before her name, because she's a member of Congress that people elected a 9-11 conspiracy theorist who doesn't believe that 9-11 was real and who's now doing CrossFit workouts you know it's really hard to do parody movies anymore about politics because the 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 stakes are too scary honestly to even find it funny anymore have you noticed these weird like subculture kind of crossovers like there's a weird thing and I, I'm not blanket labeling all people to do CrossFit as MAGA people. I, I, if you do CrossFit and you listen to the show, you know, keep doing uh-huh. your workouts, like have fun. But there does seem to be some weird connection in a lot of these CrossFit gyms across the country where they are full on MAGA cultist cr- no crazy masks. people. No masks. And and I've actually and I, and I've actually talked to a lot of friends who do crossfit and they've said that they've had to switch gyms and go to other crossfit gyms because the person who runs like literally this weekend i was with somebody because the person who ran their crossfit gym is anti-vax anti-mask and this is just something that's so commonplace at these gyms and it's just so curious to me and weird that those two things are associated in this way and i'm sure other people have seen other organizations and groups that have sort of kind of joined this cult in, in in this just bizarro way no, you're, you're exactly right i think it also kind of extends beyond even just crossfit i think it's like sort of like it's like in the bodybuilder sort of movement as well there is an interesting overlap there and what i find so curious is you know there's this one video we're not going to play it i'm not even going to say the guy's name but trust me it's out there this like bodybuilder who is definitely on steroids who is spewing all these anti-vax sort of you know, messages and stuff like that. And it's like, dude, the vaccine's not natural. Yeah. Why he's yeah. injecting like yeah. his ass with steroids. Exactly. I'm like, dude, you have <laughs> muscles on muscles. That's not natural. You know, like, what are you putting in your body? And you're afraid to take a little vaccine. I agree, Jordy. And I, and speaking of weirdos, I am, uh, well, we might as well show the Rudy Giuliani clip before we <laughs> go to a quick break. Just show the Rudy Giuliani clip. We're just randomly while supposedly supposed to be talking about 9-11, he talks about having no relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and <laughs> Prince Andrew and that he didn't sexually abuse minors. She said, you did, you did a wonderful job on September 11. And therefore, I'm making you an honorary knight, commander of the royal something or other. I turned down a knighthood because if you took a knighthood, you had to lose your citizenship. I know Prince Andrew is very uh, questionable now. I never went out with him. Ever. Never. Never had a drink with him. Never was with a woman or a young girl with him. Ever, ever, ever. One time I met him in my office and one time when we had the party. Right, Bernie? You were there. Bill Maher went on this whole rant the other week. Why there's no Republican comedians. 
Well, let me just use this as an example. Bill Maher, if, if, if a comedian in the Republican Party is going to make light of somebody uh, abusing underage girls, I don't find that funny, Bill. And I don't think a lot of people find that funny. How disgusting was that clip? He was trying to be funny. How disgusting is he? Well, comedy is really, at the end of the day, a lot of it's about speaking truth to power. And when you're punching down on sexual assault victims, there's truly nothing funny about punching down on sexual assault victims. And Rudy's just like a sick man. And for him to be saying that on 9-11, first off, Rudy did everything possibly wrong leading up to 9-11 to make the problem worse and worse and worse and make the World Trade Center more unsafe. But after the fact, People rallied around Rudy because he was mayor of the city that was just attacked. He was getting standing ovations everywhere he went. He could go to Yankee games. Everyone would give him a standing ovation. Everyone in the city would give him respect because of what had just happened. And had he bowed out then, he would be known today as a respectable figure who got New York through a very dark time, despite his failures leading us up to that. But he's decided to just double down, triple down, quadruple down on this bizarre, disgusting behavior. Behavior. Just go all in on Donald Trump. He is clearly drinking a ton and has a lot of substance issues. And he is just embarrassing himself and disgraced his legacy. And the fact that, you know, this guy, you would have thought 20 years ago when 9-11 happened, you would have thought he would be there at the 20 year anniversary giving a respectful speech in front of where the towers were, speaking directly to the families of the victims, to New York, saying that we came out of there stronger than ever. But instead, he is giving a D-rate, which is generous, comedy routine, and I don't even know where that was, talking about making sure people know that he did not sexually assault minors with Pris Andrew, even though they used to hang out. I mean, this is just a bizarre turn of events. Incredibly bizarre. Want to talk with Hal Sparks about that and more. We will be right back with more Midas Touch podcast after this brief break. No, that's not a What's up, Midas Mighty? So growing up, cereal, I feel like, was one of the best parts of our childhood, right? I know Jordy would be digging into all of his various Jordy cereals. Jordy loved his loved cereal. Jordy, Jordy would take the cereal box and he would literally put it over his mouth like a maniac. But, you know, as you get older, you don't want to, like, have all this sugar, have all this carbs, have all this unhealthy food. You realize, you know, you, you, you can't eat that anymore. But here is the thing, guys. Let me tell you about Magic Spoon, because honestly, this is one of my favorite new things I have ever had. I got all these boxes of Magic Spoon cereal right here. Magic Spoon cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. And it's only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. They have a variety pack that have four flavors, including cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter. These are my personal favorites, the fruity and the cocoa. I could eat these all day. And the flavors are amazing. It's tasty, it's delicious, it's good for you. You can even mix the cocoa with the peanut butter and create like a Reese's peanut butter cup. And it tastes exactly like the cereals that we all remember growing up with, but it's super nutritious, it's super healthy, and it actually brings joy to my mornings every time I wake up. And it's easy, I'm all for easy. When I wake up, I used to have you know, protein shakes and yogurts and things like that. Now I know I could actually have delicious tasting cereal every single morning that's healthy, that's good for me, that's gonna give me the protein that I need. It's really a great quick breakfast that is just healthy and nutritious. You gotta go to magicspoon.com slash Midas right now to grab a variety pack and try it today. Trust me on this, I love, 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 love this. And be sure to use the promo code Midas at checkout and you'll save $5 off your first order. That's M-E-I-D-A-S at checkout to save $5 off your first order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Midas and use the code Midas to save $5 off. That's magicspoon.com slash M-E-I-D-A-S and use the promo code M-E-I-D-A-S. And thank you so much to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode of the Midas Touch podcast. Welcome back to the Midas Touch 
podcast. We're joined by Hal Sparks. I see in the live chat now we do have some sparklers Mm -hmm. in effect. Comedian, musician, political commentator. He does it all. Make sure you check out the Hal Sparks podcast. I just realized I just realized what happened out here. There was an earthquake in Los Angeles this morning. I think it was the combination of the sparklers and the Midas Mighty coming together. Boom. That's exactly now it all makes sense. Political tectonic shift. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Two plates rubbing together. <laughs> now yeah, I get that it. Is, that's the way science works. This um, is the, sp- the sparklers and the Midas touch people just doing like this <laughs> little lava. It can't go wrong. How? Let's get into it. I, yeah, I, it's beyond parody. But did you see this Donald Trump Mooney's event where oh, Donald yes. Trump was preaching to from his oh. cult to their cult? What'd you make of that? Oh, I just I mean, I look. I love me, as many people know, some good crap green screen. I'm a fan. (laughs) I like it. I, you know, but very seldom can you get a video postcard from Waco uh, from the Branch Davidian style. Like you can't. (laughs) Do you know how hard it is to parody that? To get it right, to get the sc- the sky background just right, and the weird kind of mix of English and Korean, you know, overlap. that was like cameo meets uh, uh, like karaoke bar. Oh, it's like Ooh. it was like a cameo from Jonestown. You could smell the pineapple. <laughs> I I love it. I'm going to do it on my show because it has, I mean, you got to break it down. You got to go through the whole thing. And that's what I do on my show. I go through the whole thing. I don't just like take little bits like you'll see. I, in context, I will never be accused of taking stuff out of context on my show. It's whatever you put out, <laughs> that's what I'm doing, right? If Handy puts out a whole clip, I do the whole clip. That's the point, right? If they want me to do more or less, they put out more or less. And it's amazing to me that Trump, A, he had to be paid to do this. There's no question. Oh, yeah. But I mean, and and he even, this is how you know he's not really a billionaire. This is the part that really sticks out for me. There's no way, no way this dude is rich or even uh, like not massively underwater on all, all fronts because of how he addressed the boxing thing. You guys heard the language about the boxing thing where he said, he said I'm making an obscene amount of money to do this. Well, when you're supposedly worth six to nine billion dollars, unless they're going to give you seven to ten billion (laughs) dollars, nothing is nothing is an obscene amount of money. I mean, a billion. The only thing obscene about it was that he was doing it on September 11th. Mm -hmm. That's what was obscene about it. Yes, and well, that part he missed entirely. It it, and that like showing up with Bernie Carrick at the at a precinct to have Trump loving cops pat him on the back while the rest of the cops are actually out doing their job on a day when terrorism could happen again. That's one of the things that 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 New York has to deal with all the time. Is not just that you know, terrorists world over would like to strike again on 9-11 you know, because there's so much attention focused on the city. It's, it's a perfect storm. But uh, locals, January Sixers, people who are like, oh, the government's bad. And I, you know, that ISIS, they got a <laughs> couple of good points. You know, you, there's a lot of work to be done. And if you're hanging out in dress uniform on that day in a precinct, not at one of the big events, just meeting Trump and going, you know what? I always like your, the cut of your jib. Obviously, you're not the the first responder we're talking about in this circumstance. And you bring up Bernie Carrick, who was a convicted felon. He was yeah, the former police officer. That. He served as the commissioner of the New York Police Department, who Trump pardoned. That's who we're talking about here. So, yes, it always we were talking about this on the show earlier. Can it get lower? It always gets lower. Yeah. Or or quite frankly, since there is no bottom, um, it's you know, I, I think it always reminds me of that line from Loki in, uh, I think it was Endgame. I have been falling for 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> you know, that's that's pretty much like the eternal drop of the Republican Party. Like, I, If Murphy's I, law is if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. Yes. Trump's law has to be if it could and if it could go lower, it will go lower. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there. It, like, I don't know where the sewage runs. I, like that, they, they have to look up to see sewage in Trump world. It's it. And again, a, a lot of people think there is no bottom. There is none in his ethical behavior. I will agree with that. I think there is one that Trump may experience in the next year or so, especially as far as his life is concerned, because that. Tell do do tell more. 
<laughs> well, I, uh, um, as much as I think a lot of the the tax stuff and other things, there's a lot of ways to skate around that if you're willing to pay a fine and all that kind of stuff. So n- I'm not necessarily expecting that that it's the Justice Department that lands heavily on on Trump as much as they may want to try. You know what I mean? Judging how the Sacklers and other people have been able to dodge stuff over the years, I don't have to hold out a lot of hope at that scale. But when it comes to debts coming due and who they are due to, that is some scary crap. That is that is when you owe that kind of money to those kind of people. There's there's a reason why you see the you know, uh, the Lindsey Graham's of the world or or in many ways, I guess, Rudy Giuliani for the same reason, sort of clamoring desperately to this angry argument that they're making, trying to, you know, it's almost like watching them try to climb on top of a pile of other humans that are clawing at them at the same time. There's a sort of similar energy. The Trump group and the and and certainly Don Jr., whose job it is now to make sure that the company doesn't collapse, um, because once that bottom falls out, they're done. They're, mm-hmm. We're in Theranos territory mm-hmm. and they know it, you know, uh, whereas Ivanka and Jared have gone with, the name isn't worth crap. We'll deal with whatever investments still sit there and we'll just stiff arm any of the dark stuff from the organization anymore and start our own little Kardashian empire, which is what she's been doing with Jared all during the presidency. But for the last seven years in particular, as the ratings on The Apprentice started to fail, all that stuff. So that, that's the two family split. Eric and Don are like, we've got to keep the Trump brand working. And Ivanka and Jared have been like, what brand? We have some legit material investments. We have to do everything we can to keep those things from collapsing. And and we can float the rest of our lives as rich people, even if we go to jail for a while. Hal, are you surprised at how... Never. Just how crazy... <laughs> This kind of January sixther mentality has gone. You and I and the brothers, you know, we were there from, you know, we, we, we've known each other now as crazy as it sounds really since the last election, which is a, a pre, which is a pretty long, you know, which is a yeah. pretty long time ago. Does it surprise you at all just how crazy these people have gotten? No, I take it actually uh, I, as a silver lining. Because you don't get that crazy and that angry and that desperate if things are working. One of the reasons why you're seeing a lot of like pop off Karen style racists, for example, is that those very people used to be able to sit at a lunch counter or at an office and say loosely bigoted and racist things. And they got no pushback. And if not, maybe even occasionally a chuckle or some support that has dried up. And so those folks are getting increasingly more intense and and feeling the pressure of society around them and causing them to burst like zits. And there's an element where there's there's actually hopefulness in that part of it. Again, if they were, you know, if, they, if it was working, they'd be gliding through this right now. But even if you look at Mike Lindell, for example, who's been cheerleading the January 6th movement since the day and in many ways before, He's getting antsy and agitated these days. He's starting to kind of bitch about the money he's spent. If you seen him mention, like he never mentioned how much money he was pouring down this until right after the August, you know, uh, his cyberama. After that, he's like, I've been throwing good. It's basically good money after bad. I've been spending it, $1 million a day and Fox right. News is no longer taking my ads. And that's exactly right. The wonderful that's Lindell, ex- Brett. Yeah. I just need a stash. Yeah. Well, and a little bit of a, you know, kind of a, you know, a little bit of a <laughs> Minnesota <laughs> accent, you know, that's, 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 and, an impression. that's it. And, that's and it. then, and then you got to lick your lips a bunch and then you got to talk in between talking, which is one of the weirdest things about <laughs> Mike Lindell. <laughs> this he is why like Hal it, Sparks is the professional comedian why, and not it's, me. It's, it's, why, it's why is it's like half the time I was like, did his mic just go dead? No, he just. He he's does talking. do that with his lips. He, he just yeah, is constantly talk, moving his lips. Even, he's not talking, speaking. even to no one who's there. Yeah. So I, I think he's, I think Motorola experimented on him with a chip years ago. And the voice he hears in his head <laughs> is actually bad cell signal from Miami, but that's a lot. That's a neither here nor there. But again, these people, even the January 6th thing, as intense as they felt this, 
It's because it isn't working everywhere else. And look at the number of people who are turning in their own family members for participating in January 6th. That's part of the reason why these people are boiling over. And and there's always this it, there's always been this issue. It's all I mean, don't pretend that now we have because it's 2021, there's magically more crazy people. There aren't. But because of social media specifically and because of you know, Russian and Chinese intervention largely, there's this, I, this false sense of I'm not alone in this. There's this yeah. buoying of these ideas with these fake accounts upon fake accounts upon fake accounts going, you know what? You're not wrong. I feel the exact same way. Mm-hmm. I, my name is John. I'm from Indiana. And I, as an American citizen, I believe in freedom, you know, and that in those folks don't know to judge their online friends, uh, you know, as strangers they have never met. They're like, oh, anybody, any clamoring. Because if you and I, we put up an Instagram post, something like that, and there's like 80 hits. We're like, oh, uh, that should be better, I right, technically. But if you're a, <laughs> you're a, a white supremacist, incel, pi- a wannabe pickup artist, that's 80 friends you didn't know you had. Who cares if they're fake, right? Mm, Suddenly, totally. you're not alone anymore. And that's, you know, it's it's a very that's one of the concerning features about social media. There will. And by the way, there will not be a change in this until effectively everybody's verified or there's a version of social media Mm. that is verified on some form and not verified. Where if you want an account, you can, you know, show you're really a person show up at the Twitter office and go, hi, I'm really me. And they'll give you a little, you know, if not a blue check mark, an orange one. Average Joe, but that's really them, as opposed to bounced hacker farm from Macedonia through a VPN. It's a great point because so many people spew such hateful shit on the Internet all day long that they would never say in a million never. years if they had to put their real names behind it. That's a Here's great the thing, point. Though, I, I, I thought that, though, until the existence of Facebook. <laughs> and and the existence of Facebook has shown me that people are definitely willing to put their real names behind the most horrific shit. On right. The planet. But that's because they think they're not alone in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have no shame because there's a nest underneath them, a, a net to catch them when they fall of, of like minded individuals. Now, 90 percent of those like minded individuals they think are there to catch them morally, emotionally, psychologically, politically when they fall are fake. But it doesn't matter in the context of that, because the three they do know and they do talk to regularly and the 30,000 in the group that they're a part of that are fake doesn't matter. And and so it creates this false sense of security. I'm you know, I am the majority. I mean, look at how Trump even talks about it, that we're there's more of us. Well, there certainly is not (laughs) by a lot. And even right now, you've got 60 percent of of, uh, you know, Republicans supporting the infrastructure bill, for example, and the normalcy of government, even if they're like, I don't want to pay for it. I just want it to happen. You know, the idiocy of it, you know, the, you know, Republicanism versus Democratism in its concept. He's still selling that idea, even though it's it's clearly not the reality. One of the things I noticed in recent weeks was, you know, as vaccine mandates come about and whatnot, as I've not a vaccine mandate. And not a vaccine. It's it's a if you don't want to get vaccinated, it's you a can testing get testing mandate. It's a testing right. mandate, and you That's get right. vaccinated. That's um, right. But what I've seen was they used to say, hey, "We're the silent majority," and they still will say, "We're the silent majority." The silent majority. And loudest now, motherfuckers in the world. Loudest. Nah, but now nah, 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 nah. we're the silent majority. Nah, 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 nah. And now they're going, "We can't take this majority rule. No more majority right. rule." And yeah. how do you balance though? <laughs> How do you balance those two statements? I just don't. I actually saw something earlier today, Hal. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of these fake accounts, I saw somebody post a fake account um, mm-hmm. that was all. Try, I'll try to find it and, and pull it up here. And they showed that it was, you know, MAGA, hashtag America first, picture sure. of Trump in the banner, the whole nine yards. The photo was of a woman who, when you reverse Google image search the woman, is a stock photo that comes up for a woman who does hair braiding. Yes, and right, the was black all, lady. I've seen that yes, one, yes. Yes, that, that was the one. All over the place. Oh, yeah. And Dude. most people don't, and, and this is an account with like, it had something like 12 point something thousand followers. Like, for all intents and purposes, you're like, oh, this is a legitimate human being. And people think they're interacting with a legitimate human being, but this is just somebody probably out of Russia or the Ukraine or wherever who is pushing this stuff on Americans. 
Dude, if you ever want to get an idea, people want to get a grasp of how ubiquitous this like phony online ideas or phony promotion concepts are, Google uh, Edward Ginger Boss. Edward, <laughs> Edward Ginger Boss is a, uh, an ad that, the, that a Chinese company put out for this uh, fermented ginger they were selling. And they hired a white actor to be the spokesperson for this country, this company. China, Chinese companies do this all the time. There is famously a preschool teacher who is the uh, image of a mattress company worldwide. Um, this Darusi, I think it is. And it's really just a, uh, this guy got paid 10,000 uh, renminbi to get his picture taken. And now he's on these huge billboards all over the world, Thailand and France, as the guy behind this brand. And he's just he's, so nuts. And, and he might be dead oh my at God. this point. They, you know, but he, but they still have these pictures of him just turning and looking smarmy at the camera. Edward Ginger Boss is an example of just how slapdash a lot of this stuff is. Now, take that and know that this was a few years ago and go to writer, R-I-T-R dot com and Well Said Labs. Well Said Labs is and writer are how you end up with the YouTube uh, generated content videos that you see all the time on. So these are like artificial intelligence, like AI people, basically fake people That's right. who look real. That's right. The and they, so they, they, the, the voice, it, these are all, you know, there's multiple fake voices. You subscribe to it and you can, any copy is read by one of these fake people. Then you get a, a, a computer generated. And this is the new part of it. Like before it was like, you do a reverse, the slapdash ones on Twitter, you can see all the time, but there's a lot of AI generated faces. You can just have made and it'll make you an original one. That's what China and Russia are doing mainly right now, world over. And it's not just here. I mean, look at the fights breaking out in France. They're attacking all democracies. This is just the, this is, this is SOP right now. This is standard operating procedure. Yep. And there will be a new wave of stranger danger internet, like protocol. The thing going forward will have to be like, I think your friends are fake. That, that will be this, the, the, one of the new slams that will come up in the next year. <laughs> Uh, everybody who fo follows you is fake. You almost have to assume everyone's fake until proven otherwise. Yes. Like, yeah. Like, how do you trust anything on the internet? Exactly. You especially when people are making fake people. Right. Yeah. Even the supporters I get sometimes, I'm like, okay, that, that you're going to do that <laughs> until the election comes around. And you're like, I followed him because he follows Al Sparks and he says yes and he retweets his stuff and he likes his stuff. And then suddenly, like, but the really the black people are the problem. You know, that starts a month before the election. You're like, hang oh, on. Yeah. You know, that there's a lot of that. They do that a bunch. I mean, all the Facebook groups in 2016 that went from cat videos to Trump support was ad campaigns because people watch cat videos. So they make money off these sites to being paid to post for Trump. And so they you know, or or any particular like anti, you know, BLM, anti whatever or proto BLM ones to undermine the movement. So, you know, that that mix. So, yeah. That, and I want to be clear. This isn't a, this isn't a conspiracy theory. No. This is real. This is what's happening. This is yeah. how the Internet it's is being a, manipulated to control you and to control people so that they could kind of manufacture this consent, manufacture this support of a disastrous fascist authoritarian former mm -hmm. ex-president. This is how it happens. Well, and so all, and, you just yeah. need to be aware of it. It's also how they make their case to their own citizenry that de that democracy is. Uh, a mess. You can't manage it. Uh, you know, too much freedom. Everybody goes nuts. They play videos of, uh, of you know, riots last year, the French fighting in the street, all that stuff, all over Russian and Chinese TV to prove to, to scare their people. And you want freedom? This is what it comes with. Right. And like like that's how we all live all the time, which is it's, it's just like regurgitating this idea that, you know, they used to do it with civil rights footage from the 60s. Mm. Once you start giving people freedom, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. And and now they do it with just kind of modern stuff, which they have a hand in creating. There's a there's something to be said for looking at how another country runs. Let's say that country was, oh, I don't know, rounding up Muslims and putting them in re-education and concentration camps or getting rid of them in theory and showing footage or, of, of that or information about that to your people and going, that's not something we want to do here. And that's something that's going on that's awful. Um, and if you, you, there's a totalitarian slide, if you allow some right. of this stuff, the difference between that and if America secretly was sending agents over there to whisper, like, maybe you should lock these people up. That's 
what's happening currently. That's the experience on the internet that I think a lot of people put to the side. So, you know, ju- judge accordingly, t- mm-hmm. you know, tiptoe. There's, there's a reason why Twitter is basically like texting someone at a distance. It's <laughs> a great right, point. Right, 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 and right. how you switching gears. That. Yeah. No, no, you're spot on. And switching gears slightly here. Big election tomorrow. Yeah, the recall. Big recall election tomorrow predictions. Um, I think I, I think Newsom is safe. Um, I also think the stories about him. Um, I, I, I'm a, as a California resident. I voted no on it, um, and it, it's a good feeling. Um, I, there's a lot of pushback about like uh, on the right wing, like he's got a scar on him because of the recall. Nonsense. If, <laughs> and they're like he was going to run for president. Now he's been no. This is not Gray Davis 2.0. The, if anything, I would argue it actually, if you know, as Newsom beats this thing, which I, I genuinely think he will, if he decided to run for president at some point, which I've always believed was part of the plan, because mm-hmm. I've known that dude. I walked from Harvey Milk Square to the Supreme Court building in San Francisco for gay rights, for marriage rights with Gavin Newsom when he was mayor of San Francisco. This guy's been a good dude on the team the entire time. And he, he, he like comes out of a politician maker. It's like that old Steve Martin joke about, you know, that everything <laughs> at McDonald's comes out of the thing. Here's your yeah. hamburger. It literally looks malt. like Here's if you were change. going to cast the president in a movie. Yeah, Gavin exactly. Newsom, yeah. That like and, looks and, like um, that. <laughs> yeah. He just needs to, he, he needs to take like Alexander technique. So he doesn't ruin his voice by the time and end up being like a, this close to being Alex Jones president where he's talking like this all the time. Um, but <laughs> I think he will carry the beating this recall uh, if he decided to run as a badge as opposed to a scar. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's galvanizing people. I think people are rising up and in support and are saying this Republican takeover is just so crazy. And these candidates, the money wasted, it's all so ridiculous and so disgusting. Have you seen these videos that Resist Programming, who we work with, has discovered from the archives of Larry Elder Friend? These are things that he still believes in, but defending the murder of Trayvon Martin, saying that he would have voted against the Civil Rights Act of 1964, saying that slave owners deserve to get rest. Uh, reparations, reparations right. saying that he is upset that the Americans with Disabilities Act exists. Mm-hmm. Who, what, what the fuck is happening there? Well, I'll <laughs> tell you what it is. Uh, he's a radio libertarian that appeals to Republicans. He's been one of uh, a few black voices that they could point to and go, see, we, they, it's not, we, they, he, we have one like that kind of like the, 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 I've always said that the, the illusion of diversity cannot be, you, you went out and found someone who looks different from you, but sounds exactly like you. That's not diversity. You right. have to de- diversity. You have to take it as it comes. Whoever they are, you have to be willing to listen to their voice. And so uh, diversity for a Democrat, for example, is knowing that people like Larry Elder exists and that I can argue with him one to one as a human being. Republicans just go like kind of push him out in front and go, see, but his whole thing, he's been writing that kind of Rand Paulish, Ron Paulish libertarian wave where the government needs to be destroyed essentially you know yeah, yeah the, the the old uh w- the we need a government so small that vladimir putin can drown it in a bathtub is essentially you know what i've been <laughs> arguing is really the argument for a very long time how sparks we are going to be following the election tomorrow and one of the things that mm-hmm. i think bears repeating to all of the listeners out there is exactly what you said at the beginning they're acting this way. The craziness that you're seeing is not because they're winning. It's because they're yes, losing. Right. And how with voices like yours out there, um, with your supporters and with the pro-democracy movement that's out there, I think we're making great strides. I, I want to thank you so much. The half hour flew by, but it I want to thank you so much. So much Thanks for, for having me. Absolutely. The Midas Touch podcast. And we hope you come back again. And everybody go check out Hal Sparks podcast immediately. Thank you so much, Hal. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, infotainmentwars.com or uh, Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide <laughs> is the show. So yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, oh we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> no, that's not a man. Welcome back to the Midas Touch podcast. Great having Hal Sparks on the pod. I think 
The reality is, is that we could talk to Hal probably for five to 10 hours. We might easily. have to do a marathon episode with Hal one day that is like four hours. We had some time constraints today, but I would love to have him on for just a marathon. Um, by the way, I'm saying this without actually speaking to him about this, but <laughs> we just do a marathon episode with Hal because he is so brilliant and so funny. Given that we were talking about all these cults, one of the things that I wish we brought up, which we need to bring up next time, is that do you guys remember Dude Wears My Car Zoltan? Yes, of course. You, know, you, guys know Hal, you guys know Hal was Zoltan, right? Yeah, I wanted no to ask him about that, but you guys, <laughs> you guys took up all the airtime per usual, and I couldn't get to it. Zoltan was like, he was like the cult leader in Dude Where's My Car that Sean William Scott and Ashton Kutcher find themselves to when they're trying to hide, you know, when they find their, as they're searching to find their car, which is what the movie's about. <laughs> uh, such a ridiculous movie. Oh my gosh. I remember, I love Dude Where's My Car. And they had like a hand signal, which Hal actually came up with himself where they went, Zoltan. And that was Hal, a play clip. Zoltan. We are finally going to fulfill our prophecy of outer space travel. They laughed at us when we said that aliens existed, and they mocked us when we started wearing bubble wrap jumpsuits. But who's laughing now, huh? I think we have to cut it off before 30 seconds to make sure it's fair use. <laughs> so we don't get flagged. <laughs> to make sure it's not flagged. that it's Don't a- take down this podcast, please. <laughs> We're commenting on it. That's so good. But it, it reminds me of just the music, the visuals. And granted, that movie was what? Was it from the late 90s? I, it all blends together for me. Early, early, 2000s. early 2000s, probably early 2000s. Maybe, maybe like 2000 on the dot. So I've, yeah, so I have, I have a really good skill, like a random skill where I'm good at, at telling you and remembering exactly where I was when I watched that movie. That movie's from 2000. Brett, confirm. Two thousand. Right, Brett confirms if that movie was from two thousand, but yep, 2000. you know that kind. It's, it's a, a crazy really good skill, skill I have. Jordy. I can't it's confirm crazy. if Jordy just Googled that and then pretended. Give me any movie, skill. but well, I, I'll give Jordy that he has the skill. But we look at that parody, and that's really what this idiocracy, this death cult of Trump, has kind of become. Just this bizarro death cult. And I mean, we saw it today. I mean, as you know, as I think it was earlier this morning, did you see Governor Death Santis? He allowed this wacko to come and speak and talk about oh how God. mRNA like changes your RNA. And he put the, the vaccine the changes to... your RNA. Yeah. Just play the clip of that from earlier this morning. The vaccine changes your RNA. So for me, that's a problem. So I, I'm here with you folks. Um, we don't want to have the, the vaccine. It's, it's about our freedom and liberty. It's not about the vaccine. Uh, they're taking away our freedom and liberty little by little. It's, they're using the vaccine for cover. Last year, they took away our religious rights. Uh, they are not defending our freedom of speech. And uh, this is just one way to take us to the next step. So thank you for coming out today and um, thank you, Governor. And DeSantis just stands there and let let us be extremely clear. That's bullshit. That is false information. And it is being delivered by the state of Florida directly to their citizens. That is so twisted and so just fucked up that you can't. And he's using this to justify a he implemented this. A concept that cities and municipalities in Florida that require vaccines for public employees are going to face $5,000 fines per each infraction. So Governor DeSantis is using this disinformation to push forward these policies that are punishing Floridians for trying to implement policies that actually are going to save lives. This is one of the fucked up things with the Republican death cult and how it is actually being legislated to kill people. Absolutely. And let's think through some of other Governor Death Santis's actions. You know, first, he attempted to prevent the cruise ship industry and private businesses from having mandatory testing for having a mask and a vaccine requirement. And he attempted to punish and penalize private businesses. And that's going through the court system there. Um, recall again, Governor Death Santis uh, defunding schools and defunding school boards, literally taking away the pay of people who 
basically work for not all that much money to sit on school boards um, and defunding them for requiring mask mandates and vaccine mandates uh, within schools. And that's working its way through the uh, Florida court system. And not great news for those who have been following the legal AF updates on what Governor DeSantis is doing. You know, the bad updates, unfortunately, but they are updates is Governor DeSantis pretty much controls the courts because he appoints a lot of the people on the appeals and their Supreme Court. So Governor DeSantis at the end of the day realizes that he's going to be winning. Jordy, why are you looking at the camera like that? What's behind you? (laughs) What is that? Is that the Kool-Aid man? No, it's a it's a pumpkin man for Halloween. Oh, okay. <laughs> duh, the a, pumpkin. A, oh, the pumpkin duh, man. Duh, obvi- obviously, <laughs> obviously. And now Governor Death Santa strikes again, and he wants to penalize municipalities for having vaccine requirements and testing requirements. It is a death cult, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of a death cult, we talked about Zoltan or whatever, but did you see, you know, and this is, this is, death is always sad. There's this website, um, you know, sorryantivaxxer.com though, which everybody should go check out this website, sorry, antivaxxer.com. And the purpose of the website though, is showing all of these people who were railing against the vaccine, railing against mandates, giving all the fake information that you just heard behind the Florida state, Florida seal, and all of these people who are dying right now, and, you know, to some extent, death is sad to some extent, always sad. But here I say to some extent, because these people kill themselves, these people kill themselves and need to be held responsible. The party of personal responsibility is not a party of personal responsibility. They're a party of death. And just play this clip, Brett, of uh, a woman who passed from COVID, who was out there dressed as Zorro, not Zoltan, but Zorro. She has a mask over her eyes instead of over her mouth. They're so extra. Hello. I have a face mask on, honey. And I have a medical exemption and a doctor's note. So I have, um, uh, somebody sent me an email. I'll get the manager, please. I have a medical exemption. So she was harassing employees at a Staples over their mask policy, saying at first that she was wearing a mask because she had a mask over her eyeballs, and then pivoting to saying she had a medical exemption. Well, let's fast forward just a little bit to her in a hospital bed on a ventilator to today. She died. She died. Dead. Dead. And she, on her, uh, guess, guess what she was doing as she died? She was wearing a kind of mask, I guess, a ventilator over her face. And so that's kind of what you get if you're going to be an anti-vaxxer. That's, I mean, Darwin is working overtime and I think it's, it's extremely sad, but I think these stories are important for people to see because, you know, this disinformation kills, this disinformation has effects on people's lives and rippling effects and family members, and then just everybody who they spread this to. And while this woman, this woman became like a QAnon hero and Lynn Wood and all these QAnon people were calling the hospital that she was at, they were calling her a medical prisoner. And they were saying that the hospital was actually the people who were killing her. They were saying the hospital was killing her, that they were murderers. And Lynn Wood had called the hospital and was demanding that they give her ivermectin, the horse dewormer. Oh my God. And, and he was just talking to like an operator at the hospital too. He's like, I'm a lawyer and I demand, I mean, how this guy is not disbarred for this sort of behavior. There were bomb threats called into this hospital because they were treating this woman, literal bomb threats. Uh, Sorry. It's like we say all the time, when you find yourself on the side of, of anti-teacher of anti-doctor, you're on the wrong side. Isn't it frustrating though? Like, look, for the last 18 months, every, you guys have sat, all of us, we've all sacrifices. We've sat at home. We've worn the mask. We've social distanced. And now this woman who wants to pretend, you know, to play Zorro in a CVS is taking up <laughs> ventilators and hospital beds for children and people, you know, with pre-existing conditions that probably need them. You know how ridiculous and appalling that is? Can I just say it's time that Democrats start being a little selfish? These fucking anti-vaxxers, they should, they should get, they should not get preferred treatment. No, if you're not taking the vaccine at this point, fine. 
Go fuck yourself and go die alone. Do not take up the hospital beds for people who need them. I'm not sorry for her. I'm sorry for the doctors and the resources that we use to try and save her life. Now we have, uh, you know, I mean, it all goes back to what Governor DeSantis is doing. Governor DeSantis spreading COVID disinformation. If Governor DeSantis and the Republicans were representing COVID itself, they would not behave any differently than the way they are behaving right now. And that's one of the issues we're running against right now is you have, you know, 70, 75% of the population who is all working in the same direction to try to eradicate COVID. And then you have a psychotic 25% who is pushing back against all of our progress. And the newest thing I saw today, I don't know if you guys saw this, was that anti-vaxxers are now experimenting by ingesting betadine. This is an antibacterial topical solution that's used for cuts and scrapes. It's highly toxic when ingested. And it's actually uh, the antibacterial that's used in a lot of douches. I'm not making this up like vaginal douches. And so they are ingesting this uh, douche uh, antibacterial topical, um, which is highly poisonous. And you should absolutely not do that um, because they'll do anything other than just take the safe, free and effective vaccine that's out there. Well, we've always called them sheep and douchebags, and I think they're proving both to be accurate. I think they misread the uh, the container that said this is for douches, and they said, oh, it's for me. <laughs> I, I, I think you're right. And speaking of douches, let's talk about governor of, <laughs> speaking of douches, let's talk about, I mean, Pete Ricketts, the governor of Nebraska, and, and Ron Jackson for a second. I want to play these two clips um, of what they've said because these are people who know better, right? These are people who have taken the vaccine, but because they're speaking to the death cult base, they have to come up with these intellectually bizarre, you know, statements about why the our other vaccine mandates or why they're taking the vaccine but why they are killing their people and so let's start off with the governor of nebraska let's play this clip from pete ricketts from chris wallace who chris wallace does some good reporting it's just the truth you know yeah. chris wallace at the end of the day he is on fox news i don't want to i could generally paint fox news with a broad but a broad brush with 97 percent of their content but the rare kind of fresh air there is Chris Wallace, who, when he has these interviews, tends to ask good, tough questions, tends to. Um, so let's play the Chris Wallace interview with uh, Governor Ricketts of Nebraska. To attend school in your state of Nebraska, children must be vaccinated against a number of diseases. Let me put them up on the screen. They must be vaccinated against diphtheria, tet tetanus and pertussis, polio, measles, mumps and rubella, hepatitis B and chicken pox. Why are those mandates that parents in your state must comply with and do comply with routinely, why is it that they're not so objectionable and such a violation of personal freedom, but Biden's vaccine mandates are. Well, for all those that you just listed, there's a long history that parents have had the opportunity to see how those things have been implemented. And there's still a lot of people out there who don't know what to trust. And in fact, this is really an outcome of what the CDC has done because they flip flopped on so many issues, whether it's masks or whether you have to mask after being vaccinated and so forth. There's just a lot of people out there who don't know who to trust right now. Forgive me, sir. I'm old enough that I remember when the polio vaccine first came out, uh, a lot of us and certainly our parents viewed it as a blessing. And immediately I lived in New York state at that time, the state mandated that we all get the polio vaccine. So, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. There is a new vaccine that Donald Trump was largely responsible for. It's been approved, full approval by the FDA. Again, if, if the polio vaccine is OK for, for parents and they have to comply with it to send their kid to school, why not for a lot of people, not just kids, the vaccine for, uh, for this disease? Yeah, and I think this is very different from polio that has very devastating effects. And certainly we know if you're older, you know, 65 years and older, that's where 83 percent of our deaths in Nebraska came from. We know this is really devastating. But we also know that nearly 87 percent of our 65 years and older population has been vaccinated. And it's the most intellectually dishonest argument. You don't say that we have a population that is 65 percent and over, but... 
you don't have the but when you're referring to the fact that that population is more susceptible to death. We don't sacrifice our seniors when they don't need to be sacrificed and have their lives taken. I also want to go to the point where he goes, people don't know who to trust. Who they should trust are their leaders, Governor Ricketts. They should trust people like you. You are the type of person versus the QAnon disinformation window and governors across the country, political leaders across the country for all these other diseases have rallied together and said, it's us against the disease. It's not us against the CDC and against the FDA and against Democrats for supporting science. It's about Americans against pandemics, Americans against scourges and diseases. And that is is what we should trust. And you are sowing, you Republican governors are sowing the seeds of doubt and causing your crazy base to trust QAnon disinfo message boards on Facebooks over the science. And Brett, play this clip of Ronnie Jackson, who happened to also be uh, a doctor to the White House. He was one of the, you know, the the surgeons to the White House. Not one of the. He was the chief White House uh, physician. He during was the, literally Barack the Obama Obama's day. doctor. This guy was responsible for the health of Barack Obama, who got the vaccine, whose family got the vaccine. But play his clip. Did you get vaccinated? I got vaccinated, and the only reason I got vaccinated, Brian, was because I knew that I'm on a foreign affairs committee on right. armed services, and I knew that Nancy Pelosi was not going to let me travel on CODELs, on congressional mm, delegations, if I didn't get it. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have got it because I'm otherwise pretty healthy. And wow. now, I'm not anti-vax. Don't take it that way. I encourage my parents to get it. I told my sister to get it, who's immunocompromised. I think that everybody should look at, uh, really seriously at getting the vaccine, and there's a lot of people that need to get it because this virus is, is the real deal, but there are some people that need to be able to make that choice from themselves and some people are at low risk and if they don't want to get it they should have the freedom to not get it first off why is he talking ten thousand words per minute because he is a bullshitter he is scared and that's what people do when i told my mother 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 uh, turn and on you him. can tell he's a liar too, Jordy, because <laughs> first he says that he did it because Nancy Pelosi forced him one, which shows that vaccine requirements work. Hey. <laughs> but it doesn't. <laughs> Whoops. But what it doesn't also explain, though, because he's a pathological liar and pathological liars can't control what they say. So then you recommended the vaccine that you're basically telling other people not to take or spreading disinfo. You recommended it to your family members. Um, and you're saying because they're immunocompromised, but then saying that it is a personal choice for other people and there shouldn't be mandates, huh? They're pro COVID to, to score these uh, bullshit political points. Yeah. And I mean, the fact that Ronnie Jackson was in control of President Obama's health still will like I, I keep coming back to that because it is so appalling and so shocking that this guy had that sort of power. And uh, it's it's really dangerous. As I said, it is as if this party is working in the interests of covid, not against covid. And we just need to have some common sense people. And uh, we need to mask up. We need to get vaccines. And I'm comforted by the fact that all the polls are showing that most Americans actually support these vaccine mandates. Most Americans support mask mandates. And the overwhelming majority think that these Republicans are crazy. There's no other way to say it, Brett. And that's why we all need everybody listening to this, everybody watching this, we all need to pull together because we have the numbers. The policies that we support are the policies the American people support. And we're seeing that in California right now. I do want to talk about the California recall election, um, why you know we think that the vote no campaign is going to win against the GQP, the Republican-led recall, which should never have even taken place, which I believe to be unconstitutional. And I want to talk about that 
that in a moment. Before talking about that, though, I want to talk about a resource that has been very helpful to us at MidasTouch.com, which is Stamps.com. Stamps.com has been incredibly helpful to our ability to get out letters to all of our supporters, um, to get out um, the merch that all of our supporters buy. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It is a must-have for any business, and we at Midas Touch can attest to it firsthand. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, whether you just have a side hustle where you're shipping out orders and you're making things, or you're just navigating the hybrid of work life, stamps.com can handle all of this with ease. It is no wonder that over 1 million businesses, including Midas Touch, chooses stamps.com for their mailing and shipping. Stop wasting time going to the post office. Go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And make sure you use the promo code Midas. M-E-I-D-A-S. You will get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. There are no long-term commitments, no contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on that microphone on the top of the homepage, and type in Midas. That's stamps.com. Use the promo code Midas. With stamps.com, just want to also reiterate, you get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 60% off of UPS shipping rates. 66%. 66% off UPS shipping rates. Not to mention stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. It's a no brainer stamps.com. Save you time, save you money, Make sure you go to stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. That's stamps.com. Use the promo code Midas. All right. I want to talk. I know lots of people are going to stamps.com now, but I want to focus this right now also on make sure you go to stamps.com. I want to focus this also on the recall election. And I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to someone who we've worked with um, over the past year, who's done an incredible job, I think, really highlighting um, what's at stake in this recall election. Um, it really is a fight to save our democracy. We've talked about it on the Midas Touch podcast. Even if you don't live in California, if a GQ peer like a Larry Elder were to somehow become the governor um, based on Right, Jordy? Absolutely not. Absolutely. You would not. have the ability to potentially appoint a senator from California if one of our senators who happens to be a little bit older um, is no <laughs> is no longer in the Senate and they could tip the balance of the Senate right there and there, Brett, right? You're exactly right. And I think the shout out you were going to give, it was a big wind up without a, uh, without a swing was to resist programming who we worked with, <laughs> who, <right>. we, <laughs> <laughs> who we mentioned with Hal though. So maybe people remembered from our interview with Hal, um, but resist programming has done incredible research has been responsible for digging up all this footage on Larry Elder, really exposing the true beliefs of Larry Elder, unlike I've ever seen in the actual mainstream media doing a kick-ass job. And what the California recall really comes down to is do you want an actual COVID strategy or do you want our ICUs to look like Florida and Texas? Do you want a budget surplus like we have now or do you want a budget deficit? Do you want a green economy for the future or do you want reliance on fossil fuels? Do you want reproductive rights or do you want abortion to be illegal in the state of California? Because that's what Larry Elder wants. And he don't wants take our word for it. Let's take a look at Larry Elder's words through the research of resist programming. Let's start off with Larry Elder's view about the American with Disabilities Act. Play it. Have you been following this flap with Casey Martin, the golfer who wants to participate in the PGA? We talked about that issue on my show. And I, like a lot of people, are very upset that there is even something called the Americans with Disabilities Act, let alone that Mr. Martin would sue under it in order to play in the PGA. And I said, you know what's going on here? The PGA is simply being stupid. They are missing a wonderful marketing opportunity. Can you imagine 
the ratings when this person is paired with Tiger Woods on Saturday morning, on Sunday morning? Can you imagine 50 million Americans with disabilities cheering for Casey Martin? You guys are simply being foolish. Well, because of the courts, Mr. Martin can now play, and all of a sudden, the PGA is in a full retreat, not because of the court decision, but because right-thinking people were annoyed that this man whose leg is withered and will likely be amputated in seven days cannot play. All of a sudden, Arnold Palmer, who testified against him in trial on behalf of the PGA, remembered that his father had polio and remembered that it's a swell thing for people with handicaps to play. That's the marketplace speaking. So Larry Elder there saying he is upset that the American with Disabilities Act exists and says that the marketplace should sort out these type of issues. It should all be left to the marketplace. There shouldn't be any legislation about this. So how about the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Brett? What's his views on the Civil Rights Act? W widely regarded as one of the most important pieces of leg legislation to bring equality in our country. When I said to this man that I was a libertarian, he said, wait a second, libertarian? I, I had the libertarian candidate for vice governor of New York on my show. And I asked him, when you were in the Senate in the mid-60s, would you have voted in favor or against the civil rights legislation of 1964? And this man said he would have voted against it. So I'm asking you, Larry Elder, what would you have done? And I said, well, to the extent that those laws mandate any kind of interference in the private sector, yes, I would have voted against it. He went ballistic. So there you have it, against the Civil Rights Act of 1964. But should that shock us knowing that Larry Elder said that slave owners should be the ones who get reparations? Let's play that clip. By the way, when you mentioned that uh, the UK was ahead of us, they were. Do you know that the slave owners were compensated? After they lost their quote unquote property, the government compensated slave owners. I didn't know that. Yeah, and so when people talk about repa reparations, do they really want to have that conversation? Because like it or not, slavery was legal. And so their property, their legal property was taken away from them after the after the Civil War. So uh, you can make an argument that the people that are owed reparations and not only just black people, but also the people whose quote property, close quote, was taken away after after the end of the Civil War. And uh, suppose if we need any more evidence, what did Larry Elder say to Pierce Morgan, making Pierce Morgan sound incredibly uh, reasonable in this clip? about uh, the death of Trayvon Martin and whether or not uh, Larry Elder would want the murderer of Trayvon Martin living in his community. Question, do you think that Rachel Gentel is stupid? I think that I would rather have a George Zimmerman living in my neighborhood, and maybe if a George Zimmerman were living in my neighborhood, we'd have a few fewer Ario Castros. I thought we wanted people to be proactive. I that thought wasn't we wanted the people question, to say, Larry. Something, say something. I know, I'm answering something different that ought to Could be answered. Could you just answer my question? George Zimmerman like he's some sort of criminal. He's not a criminal. He's George a guy Zimmerman who cares about his neighborhood. George Zimmerman shot dead and unarmed teenager. He's a guy who cares teenager. about his neighborhood. He's a, neighbor, he's a neighborhood watch guy. Don't you want people who are proactive? And there was crime in that neighborhood, Pierce. Mm. I live in South Central. There Every wasn't crime from, house, there wasn't crime from Trayvon there, Martin in that not on there. The burglar bars are not on there because of George Zimmerman. They're on there because of the minority of thug in the community that's messing up everybody's image and reputation. This is why people profile. Instead of being angry at George Zimmerman, be angry at the minority right. of the thug who's committing these kinds of crimes. Doesn't that sound a lot also like Ronnie Jackson talking about the vaccine? Let's just make a general rule. If you are speaking with Piers Morgan, and you are the one that sounds crazy. Take a time for a little bit of introspection here. <laughs> that should be a sign. That should be a sign for everybody. I, I agree. And look, I want to also say something about um, what resist programming, what that social media account did, because all of those pieces of information were out there. I mean, these were uh, videos that were on C-SPAN. These were interviews from CNN. Here's my question, and this is why, though I'm thankful for accounts like Resist Programming, like Patriot Takes, like what we're doing at Midas Touch, and so many other accounts act out there who became accidental activists. Where is the media on these topics? The media seem to focus so much on uplifting first Caitlyn Jenner, then, then Larry Elder, and not once did they ever show us these video clips until a random Twitter account named Resist Programming, you know, who, who we know who, who Resist Programming is, but who people don't even know, you know, who is somebody who's out there just, you know, from their home, 
you know, from their living room just cares about our democracy and who's putting in the work. And here's the thing, too. I It's so interesting to me when after someone like a resist programming posts these videos that get all this attention, then are covered by all the mainstream media. These mm -hmm. stories be then became major stories. Also with Patriot Takes that goes into these chat rooms where these GQPers talk, finds what they're truly saying, and then posts it. And then you have people on the mainstream media who criticize it and go, well, that's not research. You're telling me finding a C-SPAN <laughs> clip is research. That's not research. You're telling me going to Jibber or Gabber or 4chan or 8chan or, or whatever the hell, <laughs> Telegram, Telegraph. You're telling me that, you know, these people go, that's research. That literally is what research is. Like research is literally finding clips, finding newspaper articles. <laughs> going through well, archives. Going through at, archives. Source material. And explaining why it's relevant now. That is what the definition of research is. And the media has been so sloppy, so messy, so cavalier about their job. And I don't even I don't want to mention the person by name because I don't know what they were going through. But a mainstream you know, media figure who immediately took down that video we played earlier. The Mooney's one. The Mooney's video that we played earlier because this person reached out to a Trump PR person who told him it wasn't a real video. It wasn't real. So he goes, I'm taking it down. And then somebody called him out for it and said, why are you taking this down? Um, it's a video. It's there. And he goes, well, I got a lot of yard work to do today. And so I just rather not deal with it. I rather not deal with it. That is the problem. Well, then just don't make the initial comment refuting the video that you yourself posted and saw with your own eyes. Is like, then don't don't butt in then. If you're going to not even like do the legwork, because we all saw the video of Trump giving the speech to the Moonies. I don't care what Liz Harrington said, who is a known liar and scam artist. You don't take their word for it because we all saw the video with our own eyes. And then you don't get to back out and say, oh, well, I'm just doing my yard work, so I'm not going to even put into this. No, you're the one who just sowed doubt in it. We all saw it. Everybody's reporting on it. Business Insider has picked it up. A lot of publications have picked this up. But you are believing Liz Harrington? Why? Why, why, why? It's as if anyone out there saw a video of their significant other cheating on them. A video. Video evidence. And then the significant other comes over and says, hey, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I know you saw the video, but that wasn't me. And then you go... Oh, okay. Yeah, no, never mind. Don't even worry. Don't, <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. Don't, don't even worry. There was video. There was sound. I mean, we all heard it and saw it, but I believe you. No, Trump, what are you doing? Donald Trump, a serial abuser, a serial liar, and his ilk use the tactics of gaslighting to a T, and they allow a media that's beaten and defeated and that props up this fake horse race between democracy and fascism as though they're equal, uh, it, it, they break down the media in ways that does significant and serious ongoing damage to our democracy. Just like your shirt says, Jordy, the media needs to be unapologetically pro-democracy. And the media, as of right now, is incapable of filling that role. Brad, I'll give you the final word. I'll just say, and instead of jumping on or resist programming who posts a video that they dug up from the archives and makes major headlines and news and really makes an impact in this election because they found out the true beliefs of a person who wants to control a major state, instead of getting mad at that person, you should have some introspection and ask yourself, say, hey, how did I miss this? What could I do? What archives should I be looking for? How should I be reporting the news so that I'm giving people the full version of this person who wants to run one of the world's largest economies. That's what you should be doing. And just like support other people who are digging up research and who are actually doing a good job at delivering people information that they need. Enough both sides garbage. Just get people the information they need and support others who do that. The media is scared right yeah. now because what they realize is an account like a resist programming, an account like a Midas Touch, a Patriot Takes, someone like Hal Sparks speaking the truth. That is where 
the future of media needs to be. It needs to be people having these honest discussions like we're having now in the live chat for those listening on the podcast where we deliver the news unapologetically pro-democracy, where we can be critical of democratic politicians, and we have been and we will be, but we're just not going to treat a criticism of somebody striving for democracy uh, the same way we would treat a criticism of a political party propping up fascism and propping up a deadly pandemic and killing people. That is where we need to draw the lines. And a lot of these headlines even portray the vaccination debate as though it is a two sides discussion. And it is not a two sides discussion. And we need to be um, uh, direct with people about our language and combat the propaganda out there. Special thanks to Hal Sparks for joining the Midas Touch podcast today. Special thanks to uh, stamps.com as one of our sponsors. Special thanks to our newest sponsor and someone and a company that I think is probably my favorite cereal company now, Magic Spoon. I, I, I honestly, I genuinely, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I cannot say enough good things about Magic Spoon. This stuff <laughs> is delicious. It's I like amazing. that we have sponsors Both of things of them. that we like, which is I great. love them. I want to thank everybody for watching and everybody for listening. Midas Touch Podcast. Thanks for making the Midas Touch Podcast one of the top podcasts in all news. Thank you for making the Legal AF Podcast one of the top podcasts. Go subscribe to Legal AF as well if you're listening to this now. Make sure you subscribe to Legal AF. Subscribe to our other podcasts, Maya Culpa, Zoomed In, and of course, Kremlin File. Go to those channels. Subscribe there now. And hey, one other favor I want to ask you, can you please, if you like this podcast, go on and give it a five star review. There's a feature in different podcast uh, devices. If you're listening on Apple, for example, it has a review feature. Some of the others, if you're listening, have review features, too. It really helps us stay on the charts. It helps us keep delivering this content by giving it a five star review. Um, and leaving a review about why you like the podcast. So until next time, I'm Ben, you got Brett, you got Jordy, all of us unapologetically pro-democracy. We thank you for fighting with us at Midas Touch. Shout out to the Midas Mighty!